what's up you guys, we're Max here, and today I'm here to bring you guys a brand new review. Every once in a while there's a game that looks amazing but just doesn't come to the US or the UK, and every once in a while that game will have a fan base of people who desperately want to play that game. And this is exactly what Pokémon Tournament for the Wii U is. Originally a Pokémon and Tesha mashup that was a Japanese arcade game exclusive, it was recently nationalized and brought to consoles here in the US. So how exactly is this mashup? Let's dive right in and find out, but first let's take a look at what we see inside when we unbox this game. Story and Plot There isn't much of a plot to this game honestly, but this game takes place in a brand new region called Furum. And in this region, you can battle against Pokemon in the style just like the Pokemon anime. The major things about this game that brings new to the Pokemon universe is the addition of the brand new Shadow Mewtwo. He's very similar to the Shadow Lugia from XD Go Darkness in the concept. This game also introduces Pikachu Libre, which is a wrestling Pikachu, and the brand new character Nia. Her role is pretty much to be the guide of the game, and on the annoying skill, she's right up there from, with V from Skyward Sword. But thankfully, you can turn this feature off if you'd like to. Gameplay and controls. Playing through this game, I found the controls to be pretty simple. You have your combos, your heavy attacks, your grabs, and your basic attacks. Although this game can be played with the gamepad, Wii Remote, Pro Controllers, and the Limited Edition Fight Pad, I recommend playing with a Pro Controller unless you are lucky enough to get the Limited Edition Fight Pad. For the gameplay portion, as I continue to play through the game, it feels very smooth and runs at a really nice speed. No glitches or frame rate issues at all, which is pretty shocking sometimes with the amount of random crap that can happen on the screen. Another gameplay addition that I really enjoy are the synergy but burst attacks. Each character has his own individual version of these attacks. Going into burst mode automatically boosts your damage by double, but when you unleash your special special burst move, it gets, it gets super interesting. Some Pokemon turn into the Mega Evolutions while others just do super crazy attacks just like a Final Smash or a Fatality in Mortal Kombat. Graphics. There honestly isn't much to say about the graphics, except that they're amazing. I love the amount of detail put in each character, and the entire game looks like a cutscene, and that's a great thing. Character Roster. Now with the character roster, we have a pretty decent amount of Pokemon here to choose from. We have Blaziken, Pikachu, Lucario, Garvador, Pikachu, Libre, Braxian, Machamp, Gengar, Skeptile, Chandelure, Suicune, Weevil, Charizard, Garchomp, and Shadow Mewtwo, but I'll get to him in just a few minutes. Game Modes The game modes are split up into several organized sections in the shape of a map for this region. We have our single battles to play against Solo for CPUs, Practice Mode which provides tutorials and training, My Town which is a section where you can customize your avatar and settings, Local Battle which is a co-op mode, Online Battles which is for online battles against people around the globe, and Ferrum League, which is where the game shines. Ferrum League is the mode where that pretty much acts like the regular Pokemon League in a sense. You battle different trainers until you get to the League Master. Once you defeat the League Master, you go on to the next league, all the way and defeat all of them. Throughout this mode, you discover the mysteries of Shadow Mewtwo as he continues to pop up. Online The online in this game was pretty spot on. Unlike Super Smash Bros, I haven't had any lag experience at all. There's a mode within the online section for friendly matches and one for ranked matches. In friendly matches, you go against other players who are just playing for fun, and during ranked matches, you go against other players who are competing for the highest ranks. Amiibo The Amiibo functionality is very similar to Hyrule Warriors. All Amiibos work for this game. Some give you gold, which is used to upgrade and customize your character. Some unlock outfits for your character and player cards for your character. And the other main amiibo for this game is the exclusive Shadow Mewtwo amiibo card. This card is exclusive to the game when you buy the first several thousand that are made. It's the only way to play as Shadow Mewtwo in the single player co-op and online battles. This amiibo card is free of charge when you buy this version of the game. Unlockables. This game has plenty of unlockables such as character player cards, items to customize your character, supporting Pokemon teams to help you along in battle, different stages to unlock as well. The main disappointing factor of this game is that besides Shadow Mewtwo, there isn't a single character to unlock at all. I feel like we have a pretty decent roster for a start of a potential spin-off series, but it would be nice to have a little bit more Pokemon such as Greninja, and Infernape, Hitmonchamp, and even Hitmonlee as well. 
just as the game did. This game really provided a refreshing taste to this beloved franchise in my opinion. For years I actually wanted to be the Pokemon fighting instead of commanding them to fight in the games like Pokemon Stadium. I wasn't too much into the 3DS main series Pokemon games, so this made me really fall in love with the series again, with its smooth fighting mechanics, addicting battles, and leveling system. Justice that could have been done. I really felt like this game needs a few more characters honestly. We got some pretty interesting ones, but they just aren't enough because we have no idea if this game will be getting a sequel or not. If the game does end up getting a sequel, then the lack of characters will be more understandable. I also feel like this game needs some different unlockables as well. We got a pretty good amount, but I think something more unique and simple will be a really nice touch of this game. Something more like an in-depth character customization. Also, the amiibo functionality would be better for the Pokemon amiibo. Instead of all the random customization pieces in gold, it'd be pretty interesting and cool to see a special move or unique character piece based on that certain Pokemon amiibo. But overall, not too much to complain about this game. Final Verdict This game is great. The battle style is really fun, the idea of the game is a dream come true, everything runs super smooth, and they even managed to get some fan favorite Pokemon it while adding new characters without making the game seem really pointless. I give this game a 9.3 out of 10 and I highly recommend picking this game up if you're a Pokemon fan or overall a Wii U owner. It's a nice and more serious change from Super Smash Bros and it's overall really enjoyable. I hope you guys enjoyed this review because I had a blast making it for you guys. If you're interested in watching some of our other reviews we've done, last week we reviewed Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm 4 and the week before that we reviewed Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD. Links to those videos will be in the description down below. Also, if you enjoyed this, please leave a like down below and hit that subscribe button. It takes three seconds out of your day and it makes our day completely. I hope you enjoyed this review and have a great day. Now, if you excuse me, I have to go become a Pokemon Master. Bye, you guys.